In this video, we'll talk about how we can create a CRUD service and connect our local Spring Boot application to Firebase and do some operations on top of the data which we have stored in Firebase and Firestore. So welcome to the third video, um, fourth video, where we finish almost finish building up our CRUD API using Firebase and Spring Boot. And uh, once we get done with this, we will have a fully functional CRUD uh, API application up and running which contacts Firebase. So let's get started and let's uh, start implementing our CRUD service where we actually use the Firebase APIs and uh, connect to our database and do a bunch of stuff. So let's uh, start uh, implementing. So first we create uh, our, first we implement our create APIs. So let's start with that. So we have Fire store db fire let's import the classes which we want so it says no fire store is available oh my bad I should spell it right uh, yep great so we have Faster, the DB faster, and we use the first store client um, dot get faster. And since we have already configured our application using the service account key, we don't have to worry about uh, authorization anymore. Our app is automatically authorized, so that's a great thing to need to know. Let's have some boilerplate code here. So collections API feature, and this is going to be equal to db dot fb db faster dot collection. So which collection? Which database are we trying to get our data from? So this is basically our database inside faster. So if you go inside that, and if you see our collection, so we have two collections here. The first collection was uh, made before the videos users and we are using crud underscore users. So let's call this crud underscore user. So inside this particular uh, collection, we want to create a document. So we use dot document and here we create our document. So let's actually create it. So we do crud dot get name and we do a set and it's a pojo so we have our crud name right here and now that we've actually uh, set or committed to our database let's send back uh, the time when we did this uh, we get the result back so and we'll convert that to a string so return collect shows api future dot get So we do a get dot get update time dot to string and here we have created our uh, create crud or implemented our create curve functionality so what's happening here so first we connect to our database uh, using our credentials uh, which is happening behind the scenes when we initialize or we get the file store from our uh, account the next thing that's happening is we are telling our we're using api features to actually connect to our CRUD user and then just do a set of CRUD and that's basically as simple as it can get uh, when it comes to implementing our uh, API. The next thing would be to implement get. So once we have created it, we need to get it. So let's actually implement our get API and let's see how that works out for us. So how do we get it? So the first thing which we do is the same as create CRUD. So we connect it here. You can obviously uh, abstract it out inside CRUD service, but uh, let's just use it uh, for easier purposes here. So we do a document reference. So basically look up inside our document and which document are we trying to reference, right? So we db faster dot collections again, give it a collection. So user underscore name and we do document and we want it by document ID, so document ID, and 
that's how we want our document. So once we get our document reference, uh, the next thing which we want to do is actually get it from the API. So for that, we'll be using API future um, document snapshot. So document snapshot, and this is going to be a future value which you're going to get from document reference dot get. Awesome. So now we have a, a snapshot, and from the snapshot, we want our uh, from the API feature, we want our document snapshot. So let's quickly write the code for that. So this goes away. We have our document snapshot, not a future if we want. And this is going to be our document. And we are basically going to do what we did above. So we do a future.get. So as you can see, a lot of abstractions that we you know have to deal with here. Add the exceptions. And yep. Now, once we uh, get the document from Firebase, we need to convert it to a plain old Java object. So, Pojo, right? So, let's do that now. So, let's have a CRUD app. And the next thing which we have to do is check if the document exists. So, if document dot exists, then what do we do? We do CRUD is equal to document dot to object. Pretty simple dot class and that way we return crud perfect and if it doesn't exist then we return null so that's uh, basically how it usually is so we first connect to our firebase um, client and then we connect to our firestore client and then we get our document we get the document reference the snapshot and then the uh, document snapshot uh, back from the API feature. We convert our uh, document inside to object from a POJO and then we send it back to the user. So that's how we uh, implement the GRET CRUD API. Uh, more information can definitely be found uh, on the website in the description below. And let's implement delete. So once we get our data, we can delete it. So how do we delete it? Again, pretty much the same as before, but slight changes so let's talk about them so instead of uh, doing a document we do a document uh, id a name so id dot delete and as simple as that we are good to go and we don't have to do anything else here so this is just going to be uh, right result Spell that correctly, and this is going to be API future right result which we get back, right? And the next thing which we have to send is basically uh, the document ID. So successfully deleted space document ID, and yep, we are good to go with delete as well. So this is how we implement delete, uh, get and uh, create. So let's quickly see if we have something here. So we have a document ID as user underscore one. So when we do a get uh, after running this, we should be able to get that back and it should be converted into a POJO giving us uh, the, so what is it giving us? So it's giving us document ID, name and profession. So we should get that back when we run it. So let's run it and see what happens. Do we actually get it back? Or not so this is going to be crud user my bad again crud user because that is what we have a collection as and let's run the app and see what's happening let's open up postman as well so that we can do our queries and our API uh, hit our APIs so we have that here it's a pretty interesting thing and let's wait for the server and postman to be up and running. It always says a few minutes, but never actually takes a few minutes. So uh, that way, uh, you expect that you know you you're expecting it to be minutes, but they uh, give it to you in seconds, and you get this uh, dopamine hit that. A postman is you know fast so that's how they get to you but anyway uh, apart from that we have our server running 
we have postman setting up so it actually is taking minutes that is weird so we have some time till our server runs and until then postman hopefully should be up if not then we can obviously use uh, we're doing a get call right so we just use the browser for that but let's give postman some time the server is up and running so yep postman is also up and running and it did take some time to do this so what are we doing here so we're doing a get crud right so let's quickly see that inside our controller so we are doing slash create okay we're just doing a slash get no uh, a get crud so we do a get and here the key is going to be document id and the value is going to be what user underscore one user underscore and this when we do a get on this we should be getting back our data So document ID is not present. Hmm. Okay, I get what's wrong here. But let me quickly fix that. Um, so close this down. Go to inside crud. And this is document ID. So what was the issue? It gave a bad request, right? And what was the bad request? Request in parameter document ID is not present so it needs a string parameter which was not present so cut controller document id oh my bad i think i know what i did wrong yep i just spelled it wrong so let's run the server again should be up because we didn't do any changes and all you have to do is just have to be document id my bad and almost we are good we're done server is up do a send and let's see what's up so initially it does take some time and as you can see we have our one chaos and freelancer um, professor here so perfect uh, it was working and the next thing which we need to do is uh, implement our update api and also test our application and see if it's working perfectly or not so thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video